and I'm also going to start a quick time recording. Okay, and we're rolling. So here we go. We'll do, go. We'll do a nice G major scale, and I'll leave my tuner on to keep us all honest. All right. A ready G. <laughs> I'll do our arpeggio while we're at it. Ready and go. Okay, mine was perfect. I don't know about you, but I'm doing good today because I practiced already making those videos. <laughs> okay, so now we'll start in on our double stops. Now on the video, I think I gave you four goes for each one. So that's what we'll do now. And I'm going to move my bow fairly slow. So it's going to kind of be like this. We start on the G and we're going to move that bow over till it's also on the D and keep going. It's going to take about this long. Okay, and we're going to try four of those for each combination of strings starting on the G to the D. Okay, so let's give that a go. Ready, try it. Okay, let's do that again. Ready, go. Ooh, that was a nice one there. Try it again. Ready, and... That's a good double stop for me. One more. All right. Very good. Now let's try now starting on the D to the A string. Again, we'll do four goes at it. Ready, go. one for me didn't go that good because I slowed my bow down as I was reaching for the A string for some reason I started thinking about something else and that made my pitch kind of go ooh, 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 until I really got it started see that so you want to watch out for that you don't want to when you're approaching that other string don't slow down try to keep that gas pedal moving okay let's do one more of the D to the A actually two more ready and <laughs> much better for me yeah okay now let's do the AE the hard one ready go okay yeah and again yeah one more oh I put the brakes on that time let's try it again okay that was good one more I'd say it needs extra Oh, that was really good that time for me. Okay, now those are our down bow double stops. I'd be very anxious to hear how people are getting along doing those. Anybody have any insights on how they're doing with the double stops? Anyone, anyone? Well, if you I don't find have it's going pretty well, Dan, I find it kind of relaxing. I, I kind of get caught up in those uh, for a while and just play with them. Oh, that's great. I don't know, I, yeah, they're kind of I, I sort of imagine, oh, it's 
it's a, a suspenseful part of a movie and I'm playing the. <laughs> Absolutely, Anyways, yes. Yeah, I just kind of, I just kind of fall into them. So I, I, I kind of find them fun. Now you see the fact that you say that and that you're enjoying it and that it's and it's kind of you know like a full sound that's why I think you're enjoying it. It tells me that you're getting it right that you that you have the right weight for each string and that you're hearing the strings and you're right man the fifth is a beautiful interval and you can really get into it and I don't know if you know this but there are meditation apps that just play an interval and the fifth and the fourth is very popular the people just listen to it they just like getting trance by it. So that's great to hear and keep that up. And by the way, I like your music stand there, uh, taping your music to the wall. It's one of the oldest music stands that there is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I noticed it earlier. Okay, that's great. Anybody else have, have any problems? Is anybody having any problems? Maybe you're trying to go for that next string and you overshoot, the bow goes right off. <clears throat> and uh, and you're kind of now on the D string instead of on two strings, or maybe it sounds like this when you first start going or something. Anybody having any problems with the double stops? It might be too early to tell. Why don't we do it again? We'll do them all again, and then we'll see how it goes. So we'll start with the G, and we'll do four on each set again. Already, two, three, go. Ooh, that was a nice one. Number three. And one more. Ooh, that was the best one for me. <laughs> okay, now let's try the D and the A. Are ready? And. Let's try the A and the E. Ready, go. Oh, that came out great. Do another one. Yeah, one more. Oh, not as good. Try her again. Not bad. One for good luck. Okay. Now, how are we feeling now? Anybody having any problems at this stage of the game? No? It's great. Okay, that's really good. Now, why don't we try going the other way? Uh, again, I'm not sure I'm actually getting it. Okay. okay. Want to yeah. try it for me and I'll yeah, see? I'll, I'll, I'll do the, uh, the G to the D and the A Good oh, start. My... Am I okay? I'm on? The internet is kind of wobbly here. Yes. Really good, Elaine. You hearing that nice ring? Okay. Okay, so that's the idea of what we're looking for, right? That's it. That's it exactly. Why don't you try D to A for me? Oh, well, that might not be so good. <laughs> Oh, that was good in the end. That was good. Okay. It had a little bit of rockiness kind of getting over and started, but once you got going, that was very, very good. Like the upper part of the bow went really good. Okay. Try the hardest one for me, Elaine. Um, uh, oh, you had about three inches of it working good there. <laughs> Try one more time. Okay. Uh, no not quite i'm only getting one the e it, first of all you're kind of starting a little bit too much on the d side of the a straight okay and the other thing is remember that the e is a straight drop so try to try to allow your arm to kind of drop a little bit too okay not quite oh. try her again it's a deep dive <laughs> No. Oh, not quite. One more go, and then I'll leave you, because you didn't get it once. Okay, so it tells me that you got to kind of 
do a deep swan dive with this yeah. hand to get to the E. The okay. other ones sound terrific, really, really okay. good. But the okay. A to E one is the hardest, and it's because of that different direction for the bow. This is the okay. A, this is the E, right? So you right. gotta really, I find it to be a deep dive. I When I'm playing A, E, double stop, I'm basically kind of extended my fingers all the way down to get that E string. Okay, we'll try more and you can keep at it. All right, let's try it all again there, guys. Okay, are right, ready to, and here we go. Anybody having problems? No, that's great. Wow, that's excellent. Okay, so now let's go the other way. So now we're going to go on the up bow and we're going to start on our E string. And we're going to do the up bow and then join the A string. Like that. You see that? Nice up bows. And remember, we're dragging that bow up there. Yeah, that looked really good there, Julie. Really good chicken wing on your up bow. Really, really good. Okay. So let's do it, everybody. Start at the tip on the E. Up we go. Ready? Go. Try that again. One more. And last one. Okay, now you might find that even easier than the down bow one because you're starting on the E and at least you can see where you're going. Now let's go A to D, okay? Ready, A. Oh, it took me a while for that one. Try to get. Oh, that was nice, try to get. There's Deborah. that's great, she was hoping to make it. There we go. She forgot it was Tuesday. <laughs> Let's try a couple more, okay? A to D. Ready, and. Oh, yeah. One more. Okay, now let's try the D to the G on the up. Ready, and. Woo, I hit the barometer. <laughs> try it again. Ready, and. Couple more. And let's try one more. Now, how are the up bow double stops feeling? How are you getting along with those? Who finds them easier than the down bow? Anybody find up bow easy? Yeah, you do, Elaine. Okay, that's good. That's good. So you're going to learn from that, eh? So with that EA thing, what you, whatever you do that works on the up bow, you do exactly the inverse to get the other way, eh? So, but it is informative because you can see what you're doing and you kind of make it over there a little easier. So that's good. That's really good. Anybody having any issues or questions about that up bow double stop combo? Before we try it again. <laughs> no, everything working okay? Oh, it's so good. That's great. That's mean, it tells me that everybody's being gentle with the bow and always remember, that you can get out of any tough scrape by putting the gas pedal on and moving that bow, okay? So if you get a little crunch or choke, just put that gas pedal on and get out of that hole. No big deal, all right? Let's do it. E to, e to A to start off. 
Freddy and. Mm hmm. Hi, Deborah. One more. Oh, yeah. Now let's go to A to D. more and last one and now we'll go D to G ready go Ooh, that sounded nice I love these new strings in this bow oh well a couple more one more All right, how's everybody feeling about those? Doing pretty good? Okay, now the last thing we're going to do, once you do that, you know, I call that approach practice because you're practicing trying to approach that next string. Of course, when I play double stops, I don't need to approach it anymore. I can just do the... See that? So the next thing we're going to do is after you're finished all that approach practice, which I know you've been doing diligently, uh, then you're going to just try doing them right off the crack, and it's going to sound like this. And you can do an up bow too. On to the next. And then the last one. what it should sound like so what we're going to do is what you did with your approach practice you're going to try doing that first and then off you go okay that's what we're going to do so we'll get ready with the g and the d and then we'll try doing that so get your bow there and move it over to the d and off we go ready go up Now let's do the same thing to the D and the A. Put your bow on the D, move it over to the A, off you go. Up. Yeah. And we'll do the last one, the A to the E. So we'll put the bow on both. See if you can put it over there. Yep, there you go. Go. And the up. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that all one more time. Exactly the same deal. Ready? G to D. Up. D to A. Up. A to E. Up. Let's go back to the A to the D. And then the last two. How did that go, everybody? A little bit messier, maybe. <laughs> That's all right. That's normal. But you can see how the approach practice really helps, right? Did everybody notice that you're a little bit more sure-footed on being on each string? That's great. Okay, let's try it one more time. Same thing. This time we'll do it in time. And when I say that, I mean this. Ready and... So we're going to add a little timeline to it to put the pressure on just a little bit. Okay, so put that bow on the G, join it with the D. Uh, one, two, three, go. string it's a beautiful thing and I did I tell you guys about this bow that I borrowed from Heinel I did oh I still have it I was supposed to get my bow uh, actually uh, 
last Thursday, but there was a few tunes to be had at Dora Keo's on the weekend, so I did not go get my bow, and I think I'm just going to keep it until the end of August, because they really don't need it. I do. Anyway, how are we getting along with the double stops? Anybody got any feedback for me, how you're, how you're feeling with the double stops now at this point? All good? Okay, well, that's great. Awesome. Very good. So now, the other thing I had on, on the deck was drop-down practice. So, did anybody do any drop-down practice this week? You did? Oh, that's great. And how are we getting along? Is there anything to report? <laughs> I see this. And that's really exactly to be expected after a week of trying out drop downs. Elaine knows the drill. She's done many, many drop downs. Uh, but anyway, so that's very normal. It doesn't work right away, that's for sure. So let's try some, okay? Let's start on the A string. It's our most familiar string. And that D, I don't know about you, but the D on the fiddle for me, the middle D, is probably the most familiar note to my, e my ear. So here it is. <laughs> Oh, whoops, low battery on the tuner. That's not good. Just give me one sec. I need the tuner if we're going to do drop downs. All right. Okay. So the D, the middle D, that's what they call the one on the A, the middle D. The high D is way up here. <laughs> Here's your D, guys. And, and you know what? If you can match me and play it, please do. If you don't, if you're not quite sure whether you're matching me, just listen to me play that high D and get it really ringing in your head. Okay? That's her. She's beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to play A and then D. Nice and long notes. Give yourself time. Ready? Go. Again. Again. That one was a little flat on the flat side. I'm going to try one more. One more. Okay, now that's D. So how was your batting average? Let's start with, say, Joanne. How was your batting average on those drop downs? We did five. How many came out in tune? Uh, you know, they all start, when I first put my finger down, there's a bit of red. On what side? And on the spot side. Okay. But then it's like, then it goes all green. So I think it's a pressure thing, maybe. I don't know. It, and it also could be your bow, okay? So if, you, if you're if you a little bit hesitant with your bow, the pitch drops slightly. And when, okay. you, pit, when you finally get the gas on, then it, it comes back up. And it's because the bow puts a little bit of weight on the string. So you can either be a little gentler, which is probably what you need to do, or just try to get that gas pedal on right away, okay? Because okay. it actually sounds like your finger is in the right place. Yeah, but, I think it is. Okay, because you you know you, you still have to pay attention because you it might be a finger pressure thing, but it could also be your bow. When the average when sorry when the margin is that narrow, a little strip of red, then it could also be your bow. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Awesome though. That it sounds like progress. All right. How about uh, Joe, uh, uh, Julie? How how did you do with your drop downs? We did five. How many did you get? Um, I think I got four out of five. The first one was a little off, but then once I seem to know where it is, I can go back to it. That's exactly what you need to do to get better at it. That's great. Now, which way was it flat the first try? Yeah, yeah. a little bit flat. Yeah. And I and I, I think your comments to Joanne about the bow, I think I was a little hesitant on the bow too. So I think, you know, once I got it, once I knew I was there and I get it moving, it seems to be better in tune. Okay, so it's, it probably is maybe a little bit more pressure with your finger and get the gas on. No brakes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no brakes. Just remove the brakes like the Newfoundlanders. Okay. How about Heather? How you doing with your drop downs, Heather? I think they're okay. Maybe a four out of five or a three out of five. Um, are we putting all three fingers down? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, because then you'd right. be surprised. The other two will probably be in the right place right on their own. <clears throat> I actually find my pointer finger is usually too, too, um, too far down, too close to my head. And um, that's so actually it's, it's one thing I've noticed chronically. My pointer finger, yeah. I need to really concentrate to keep it where it's supposed to go, especially for a drop down. Okay, okay. Now that you make a very good point, it's it's great that you're being so mindful of your hand, because that means you're going to progress a lot faster. So when we get to the first finger drop downs, you're going to take care of that problem. Okay. For now, we'll just worry about the third. And the thing is, when you do put all three fingers down, that's for ease. That's because when you're playing a tune and you put all three fingers down, the other ones are there to use rather than need, needing to come down and be tuned, right? But I often, when I put my three fingers down, I have to do a little nudging behind it. See what I mean? Especially with my two, okay? So you might have to do that too. But when we get to the first finger drop downs, you'll be able to zero in on it a little bit more as well. But three out of five is really good. You're really doing good. Now, how about you, Deborah? How are you doing with your, your drop downs out of five? Um, probably about a four. Mm. I've got one of these really weird little tuners on it that when I first drop down, it's green and then it'll go like one bar uh, flat and then all of a sudden four bars sharp. So I think really? I'm rolling, I think I'm rolling my finger a little bit. Okay, two it, things like, about that. So first of all, do you feel yourself rolling your finger or are you just nope. assuming? Okay, nope. I don't think you are. Okay. okay. You, you would feel it like if your hand was moving and you were and your finger was nudging around you would feel that right so then my first thought was oh maybe it's your bow okay because if you first okay. start the note and it's in tune but then it varies sometimes that can be your bow if your fingers okay. are moving but also the last thing is the tuner that you're using there they yes. are not very accurate those tuners okay um, I have a lot of experience with them because every student I have has one and uh, I noticed that they're fine for getting your fiddle in tune, but for practicing they're not very good because they're just not that sensitive and they'll give you a false. Okay. Uh, so I find the tunable app to be the best, uh, but even my trusty old 1997 Korg tuner is yes. excellent and yeah everybody has one of these they were they yes. were the cheapest one on the market but they are really the best me and my wife did tests with this thing when we first moved to town and because i worked at a music store and we tested all of the tuners out that they had there even the one that was 200 bucks and this is the only one that could hear the bottom frequencies of the tuba okay. even though it's the cheapest uh, but I used it for years. It was my buddy on tour. It was always with me. It's a really good tuner. It gives you the little uh, LED yep. thing. So that would be much better than the clip-on ones. The only okay. clip-on one that I've noticed, and I've tried them all, the only clip-on one I've noticed that's good for practicing is called the Snark. And it's round. It's this little round thing and it clips on. And I got to say, out of all the clip on tuners I've ever used, that thing is accurate as hell. And it moves with you when you're practicing because the other ones don't. They take a reading, the mic turns off, they take another reading. See what I mean? Yeah. 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 So it might actually be your tuner. Okay. I'll go see if I can find my old one. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you would get along a little better because it's, it's just a little bit more reactive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you, you, Bill. How are your drop downs? How's the middle D going there? Are you getting it in tune out of five times? Talking to me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I, I found it uh, on the G string. It's a, hard, a little bit harder. And sure. on the E string, I'm always a little bit low, just a teeny bit low, but it. I don't know why that should be, but no, the A string, the A string, I'm almost always right, and the D string, I'm almost right. 
Uh, that's great. The, the, other, the outside ones are a little more difficult. Okay, two things about that then. First of all, it sounds like you're making really good progress. Being a little flat on the high A is very common. And I find it's just a, a finger pressure thing. You just got to press a little harder on it. Like, I'll show you how much you have. So here, let me see if I can get my tuner in a way that you guys can see it. One second here. Okay, let's see. <laughs> see here so I'll show you this is what I'll do so here's my A in tune and this is here I'll put the tuner in here yeah everybody can see that okay here's my A in tune now I'm going to press into it does everybody see that not very well but it's about a quarter inch on the sharp side of the uh, middle green strip so you have a lot of sharpening power on that e string you don't have to press very hard either it comes right up so that's what i would suggest bill use more finger pressure for the high a and for the g string always remember that you got to move the whole hand over otherwise most people can't reach to see if they don't move their, their whole hand over, okay? But if you're having better luck on the A and the D, that seems, tells me you've got a good shape for your hand there, okay? That's pretty good. Okay, now what my tuner's telling me there, Bill, is that your high A was actually a little sharp. Your D and your G were really good. The C got good, but your high A was sharp. Okay, so we'll just we'll just keep our eye on it as we go along. But that's your do. You did some really good ones there as well. And Elaine, I would ask you about your drop downs, but I've well, you've done a lot of drop downs, so I know how you're coming along pretty good. Okay, let's do some more. Here's the D. And let's do some more high D or uh, middle Ds. everybody feeling now pretty good I see heads nodding that's good now let's do some G's okay so that's D string to D3 here's what the G sounds like very rich I gotta get my tuner back in front of me <laughs> keep turning around to check it okay so here's your middle G So now let's try it. Open to three. Ready, go. Just, we did five. Hold up with your fingers. How many did you get right out of five? Three. Okay. Four. That's great. Four. Great, great, great. Very good. Okay, that's good. So we'll leave that one. You know how to work on it now. Let's go to C on the G string. All right. Sorry it exists. I'm sorry. What can I say? You know what they say about the C? Even when it's in tune, it sounds like a fart. Okay, so let's do it. Here we go. Ready? And. One more. 
Now I did, I was about four out of five because my last one there wandered a bit when I glanced up at the screen and back down because that can affect your finger pressure. Like that's what I was looking at my tuner like, and you want to keep things like that to a minimum. Uh, things like that affect your finger pressure all the time, unless you're used to it, you know? And I remember my father, when he was at first doing classical years and years ago, when he was 15, he competed in the Kiwanis Festival. And one of the feedback lines was that he moved around too much when he was playing. You know, <laughs> and it affects you. It can affect what you're trying to do. So, and he got mad at it at the time. He thought they were a bunch of stuffy classical people. But at the same time, he used to talk about how it does make your job harder because, you know, you're being all gentle with your bow and where you are with the weight and all that. And then you go like that, you know, uh, and it can also affect your finger pressure too. So you want to keep that stuff to a minimum until you feel comfortable. Then you can do what you want. Okay, now how did we do? Oh no, so three is really good, four is even better, C is really hard. Let's do some more for the practice. Now when I have my C down, I have a lot of pressure down because I have small hands and I'm kind of flat fingered when I hit that note, so I gotta press a little harder. See if you can be mindful of your own to see what you have to do. Let's do it, ready, and. five out of five. Anybody else? How about you guys? Five? Three? Five? Three? Three is great. Three is great. Doing really good. Right on, Deborah. Okay, now let's move to the high A. Let me play it for a few minutes. It's very bright. amazing it's the harmonic from the back of the instrument see that it's the it's like half of it ringing okay here we go open and then three ready and Okay, I was four because one my my third one moved a tiny bit uh, for some reason. I don't even know why. How did you guys do? Hold up your fingers. How many did you get out of five? Three? Three? So yeah. So a little bit oh four for a lane. Great. So a little bit reduced uh batting average on the high A, eh? The E is very sensitive to the finger pressure, all that stuff. It's just a it's just a pain, that E string. Let's do some more requires extra work. Here it is. Okay, ready, go. Okay, how'd we do that time? I was five out of five. How'd you guys do? Four, four, five, four. See, that was better. Five, Bill, right on. And that was one of the ones you were trying to work on. So that's very, very good. So excellent there, guys. So that's the drop downs. Keep it up. Now, let me show you. I don't really need to show you. It's the same as the uh, drop downs for the third finger notes, but I'm gonna just demonstrate some second finger drop downs, okay? It's now the problem with the second finger ones is that you don't have a reference note. So on the E string, it's you know what? Uh, I'm going to back up. We're not going to do the second finger ones. We're going to do the first finger ones. OK, next. The reason we're going to do the first finger ones next is because the second finger ones are harder because they have two positions and you have to practice both of them. Because we use the two positions of our second finger all the time. The third finger, you got to stretch once in a while. The first finger never moves, 
but the second moves all the time. See that? So it's a little bit harder. So let's get our first fingers in order first. We still have the same problem of no reference note. So this is where your tuner is going to be very important, okay, to make sure you're in the right spot. Now, let's start on the A string. Here's my B. B is a really hard note to tune. Okay. That's it. Bang on. Really hard to hear, okay, but that's all right, we can persevere. So let's do it. Open and then one on the A string. Ready? Go. with B. Out of five. Four. Jeez, that's great. Three, three, four for Elaine. Elaine's getting much better. Three. And that's good. That sounds good. I'm glad you're getting such good results. One thing that I have done with some students that have trouble hearing B is I play them B in tune. Then I play them a little bit flat B. Then I play them a little bit sharp B. And then I play B again. That way your ear knows what the not quite up there enough and a little bit too far sharp sounds like so you can avoid it, okay? Because B is a hard one to hear. So here it is in tune. Here's a B when it's a little bit flat. Here it is in tune again. Did everybody hear that brighten up a tiny bit there? Yeah, okay. Unfortunately, you don't really hear it dull. Uh, you really hear when it brightens, but you don't really hear it dull. Anyway, here it is sharp. Oh, wait, in tune again. Now, here it is sharp. And here it is in tune again. Everybody hear a microscopic difference between those two notes? You didn't there, Joanne. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, very hard. I'm going to do it once more. Here she is in tune. Here it is sharp. Here it is in tune again. Now, I saw some head nodding that time. So the sharp has a little edge to the sound. Is that what you what you noticed? And maybe you noticed a lack of that edge when I came back in tune. And that's hopefully, it's all, really all you got to go on with B, unfortunately, okay? So if it's flat, it sounds depressed. If it's sharp, it sounds edgy. And if, it is, if it's in tune, it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so let's try some <clears throat> drop downs on the B. Ready, go. Try another one. One more. Last one. Okay, I got four out of five. My first one was not very good. How did you guys do out of five? Oh, we're getting somewhere. Two, Heather, a little bit of a black backslide. That's okay. We'll get there. Now, let's try on the D string. So that's an E. Now, you can use the E string to tune that one. Okay, because it's there. That's what it should sound like, though. I'll play a few of them for you. OK, 
Okay, and I don't need to show you the little bit flat E, little bit sharp E, because E is one of those ones we're familiar with already because of the open E string. So let's try open to E. Ready? Go. Okay, my I got five out of five. How did everybody else do? Four, four, five. See, that's good. It's easier. Four and four. That's great. We're getting somewhere. Okay, so that's E. Let's go down to the low A. This one I find to be the most important first finger note on your fiddle. The reason it is so important is because basically the bottom of the fiddle is the G string. That's the very bottom of the basement. You can't play any lower than the G string. So when you're thinking about that A, that's the first step up from the bottom of your fiddle. Now, of course, there is an A flat, but we never play that note in our music ever. Like, and certainly we play in E flat, like in Cape Breton stuff or whatever, but it never goes down to the G string. It's always up in the upper register. So I don't even bother with that A flat. I consider the first step up on the fiddle to be the A. Okay. And the nice thing about it is it's another one that you can tune. See, that's still an A. And the, the other thing I'll stress is when you do get it in tune, Make sure that it's not in a way that you're really leaning far forward or back. You want it to be comfy. More than all the other first finger notes on the fiddle, this one needs to feel comfortable. Here's what it sounds like. It has a ring. Because it's an A. Let's do it. Open and then what? Ready? Go. Let's do it again right away. We haven't even got to the two string drop downs yet. Okay, open and then one. Ready, go. some uh, nodding heads there that's good that's good okay last one hey feather five out of five yeah last one we're gonna do is the E string now that's a hard one again because we don't have a reference note it's an F sharp that's what it should sound like this is one well I where I will show you what it sounds like when it's flat and when it's sharp okay so here it is in tune Here it is a little flat. You hear the reduction in brightness there. See that? Here it is in tune again. Now, here it is sharp. You're not going to like this. <laughs> oh, it's awful. I hate that. And here it is in tune again. Okay, and that's why I'm always talking about how it's so much better to approach a note from a little tiny bit flat, because even if you are flat, it just kind of reduces the brightness of the sound. It's not the worst thing in the world, you know. And if you listen to some old players like our, like uh, Angus Chisholm, for instance, uh, Cameron's what was Cameron's cousin or what is, it? huh? 
Uncle. Uncle, that's, yeah, Cameron's uncle. Uh, he was a little flat here and there, you know? Uh, but the thing, nice thing with flat is that all you got to do is press harder and you're instantly in tune, right? Whereas when you're sharp, it has this edginess that's really hard to listen to. Oh, there's Catherine. And also, it's really hard to flatten yourself with finger pressure. You don't get very much flattening power before the note stops really sounding. It starts to be a non-note. So it's far better to be a little flat press in, and then you're bright and the sun comes out, it's beautiful, rather than being sharp and trying to get max really hard. See what I mean? Yeah. So let's try that F sharp, everybody. Here it is in tune. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. We're doing drop down from E to F sharp. Okay, we're okay. gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do five tries, and then I'm asking people their batting average when they're done. Okay, so let's give it a go. Open and then one. Ready, go. that guys I got five four that's great four excellent four for Bill three for Catherine that's good Catherine that's still good that's what we're kind of hovering around four for Deborah four for Heather that's great okay one thing I also noticed with people using tuners make sure you put that tuner in your line of vision when you're doing this because of that same problem I can be playing a note and then I go and look at the tuner and my finger pressure goes down at the same time and I don't realize it. See that? So you want to make sure that tuner is kind of right in front of you so you can just glance with your eyes. Okay? Anyway, that's drop downs for the first finger. Everybody got a good clear idea how to work on that? Good. Make sure you have your tuner on for these ones because like I said, a couple of them are non-referenced notes. They're harder to hear. And I also suggest with those notes that you spend more time on them than the other notes because they're harder to hear. All right. Make the weaknesses into strengths. All right. Well, that's enough of that foolishness, I would say, except why don't we go up and down a G scale uh, just so that you can feel so good about how much better you're getting at that whole thing. All right. So let's just go right up and down that G scale. <laughs> Here we go. Ready and. practice that one too because we're going to learn off to california now which is in g so it's the perfect key for it okay so let me play off to california a couple of times
that's her. All right, everybody getting that? And you can hear now, hopefully you noticed after we've learned a few tunes that this one is fairly limited when it comes to how many phrases are in the tune, okay? Because we, the ending is not even different. So we got the, the first phrase, the second phrase, the first phrase again, and the second phrase, but it's an ending. <laughs> and then in the second part, we got the first phrase, and then uh, the the second phrase after that, but then we're just back to the A part. So that's a total of one, two, three, four phrases in the whole damn tune. It's not very many. So I thought we could probably get this one pretty easy, and it's a lot of fun as well. Okay, everybody hear those phrases going by and the repetition involved? Oh, good. That's great. So let's take a look at this first part. And I love this version on the session.org. It's almost exactly the way I've always played it. So you can really rely on this one. And it has that little trick triplet. <laughs> arpeggio there and you guys are so good at that now so let's see about that first phrase I'm gonna play it once more so you can hear it okay let's give that a try a little scale up on the D string and then we got G F G down from B skipping F and then arpeggiate and then the E. Okay, let's try that together, guys. Excuse me. Nice and slow now. Real nice and easy. One, two, three. Looking good. Let's do it again. Ready? Two. One more time to be sure. One, two, three. Okay, anybody not be able to get that phrase? Are we learning this by ear or? Yes. Now I did send music, I did send music, uh, I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. Well, I've got the session open on my phone. That looks like version nine, <laughs> I think. Yeah, <laughs> let me see which one it was. So that's the one with the dots. Yeah, you're on my you're on my email list there, Catherine. You see CatherineRoss50 at gmail.com. But I'm gonna forward it to you again. Thank you. No problem. Catherine Ross50 at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah, so on the session.org, let me see which one it is. It is number three. Number three is the best mm -hmm. version on the session.org. All right. Okay. Five, four, three. Oh, but it doesn't have any dots. Yeah, it does. If you click, it'll show you dots. You got to click on sheet music. Hmm. Okay. Did it work? No, no dots. Oh, oh. there. Okay. Uh, sheet music. Mm -hmm. Sheet music. A little tad. Did it work? No, no dots. Oh, okay. I'll share my screen. Oh, that's okay. Uh, it looked like number nine was was good. Number nine. That's... Let's take a look at number nine, just quick. Yeah. Maybe no, almost exactly the same. That's the thing. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. Yeah, it's really good. It's exactly the same. The only difference with number nine, number nine, is that it's written out with those dots and dashes. You see that? Yeah. And uh, that's often done with the hornpipes, but 
I, I I never ever agreed with it because if I did it like that, it would sound like this. <laughs> Not very swingy at all. <laughs> but people do write them out that way sometimes because they want you to get the swing in in a simple way. But anyway, that'll do you there, Catherine. Okay. So we're get, we're doing a mixture of by ear, and if you need to glance at the music, that's fine. Okay, because it helps you a lot. But let's go over that phrase one more time, guys. Little scale up, and then G, F, G. A one, two, three. Yeah, now we got this little scale up from D. And we got a G, F, G again. Then it goes over, back down, little arpeggio there, and then we got this. That's very common in corn pipes. Okay, so I'll play that again. Let's give it a try. Little scale up from the middle D this time. Ready? Two, three. G, F, G, D, E. Down we go. A, B, A. Let's do it again from the A3. Ready? Go. time. Ready? Go. All right, and that's the first and second phrase of the A part. And you can see that the ending is just the second phrase with a little bit different at the end. That's the Christmas, Killar Christmas in Killarney bit. See that? Why don't we try just that bit? A, B, A, G, F, G. And that's A, 1, A, 3, 2, 3 on the D. Ready? And. Do it again. Ready? And. Last time. Ready? And. Okay, and that's the ending. So, theoretically and by rights, we should be able to go right through the whole tune. But, or I should say through the whole part. But, let's just do the first two phrases, see how it goes. And then we'll try it again, see if we can get through the whole A part. So we scale up from the D string. A one, two, three. <laughs> My fiddle uh, finger reading tells me that everybody's doing really good. Anybody having any problems with the with those two phrases? Anybody at all? No? Let's do it a few more times. First two phrases. One, two, three. <laughs> Who 
survived? Everybody. That's great. <laughs> Any problems, insights, queries, concerns, comments, or complaints? Dan, sometimes I don't know where you are. Were we just playing the first line or most of the first line? We did the whole B part there, Heather. Okay. First grade, the whole A part. Okay. Both uh, lines. We with did just the first that. ending? With just the first <laughs> ending. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. Just the first ending. Now, the only difference between the first ending and the second ending is the lead in for the next part. Do you see that? Yeah, they're both exactly the same. If I played the tune without pickups, you wouldn't even need a first and second ending. <laughs> So it's that's really the only difference between the first and second ending. But yes, we did the first ending. Okay, let's do it again. It was so successful. Let's do it again right away. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> doing people okay that's great excellent excellent no problems so let's go a little tiny bit faster then and i want to also make sure that i know the second ending it's just another scale up yes bill the first bar of the second line like it, it doesn't sound like the way you play it. I'll play it like it's on my thing. Yeah. 
You don't play it that way. Yeah, I'm playing it that way. It didn't sound like that. Do you, are you playing a long G to start it off? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's a G, F, G, I think. It's G, G, it goes long, uh, G quarter note, and then G, B, A, G, E, B. Okay. So the, the rest of them are all... Have, yeah, yeah. So the version that you have has a long G instead of a G, F, G. It's very common and normal. Either way is totally fine. But if you play the long G, just make sure you hold it for the for the length of time. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna make sure that I sent you guys the right one. I think I did though. Let's see. Yeah, I know I said the one I sent you it has G F G. But you might be finding it somewhere else as well. Okay. Anyway, let's try it a few more times, just to be sure to be sure. Anybody else have any problems like that? No? Okay, let's try it a few more times. Okay. A one, two, three. That's how we start the second part there a little little run up from d there to start the second part okay now everybody good with the a part feeling okay it's workable question mm -hmm. um you play the uh lower d e f triplet all on one bow but yeah. the higher you do it up. Oh, yeah. good yeah. question. Good question there, Catherine. So it's not really the lower one and the higher one that makes me do that. It's the bow direction. So when I hit triplets like that, whether it's in a reel or in a hornpipe, anything 4-4, if I happen to be going down for the for the triplet, I, or uh, uh, sorry, if I happen to be going up for the triplet, I slur it, okay? If I happen to be going down for the triplet, I single bow it. Okay, and it's because of this. So when you do an up bow slur on a triplet, it sounds great. It has a nice little run up. See that? So you can get the bow snap it a little bit there. When you're going down, you can do this thing. So, see that? See how that works there? And it's a neat, it's a very Irishy little kind of ornament. It's basically like doing a cut, except you're moving your fingers too. See that? Really Irish is it. It puts a big old shamrock on it, you know? Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of what my arm does. If I hit a triplet going up, I slur. If I hit it going down, I single bow. And it'll probably work for most of you guys too, okay? 
Now, at this point, we're going so slow, it doesn't really matter. It's more when the tempo goes up that that type of thing starts to matter more, which is why you might as well get it under your arm now while we're going slow. Okay? That's a very good question, Catherine. I forgot to mention about triplets. And they're a lot more prevalent in hornpipes, of course. Now, the second part. So, you still look puzzled, Catherine. Well, I was hitting the higher triplet as an up bow as well. Well, that could be. And then uh, then you just go do your up bow. So let me see what I don't normally do. I'm going down for it, but I'm doing this little slur in the middle. I don't know if you noticed. Uh -huh. See that? Now, and that is another thing. Now, I know we're all we're beginners, so you don't really need to sweat that slur. It's a little bit more advanced, but I will point out that that's another big shamrock you can put on the music. The Irish guys, when there's a few notes on the same string, they love to slur it, especially in the up bow, because as you take your fingers off, you get this nice popping sound. Listen to this. See that? kind of like an ornament almost and it snaps out and it rings out and it's a very Irishy thing to do and this man here taught me how to do it Kim Vincent and I've been doing it ever since it just happens see that so yeah when you get three or four notes on one string and you got you happen to be going up it's a really nice thing to do but it does turn my bow around so if I were you to, to do it like you guys <laughs> It's even easier. See that? So just keep going like that, Catherine. Best thing for you to do right now, okay? Just single bow. Don't worry about the fancy slur and leave that to me. And I'll and, and don't worry, you'll get there. Okay, <laughs> second part. Now, so I got this little triplet. Oh, that's the only thing about the up bow slur and the E string. You can really whistle out sometimes. <laughs> okay, so we go up the scale, and then we go this little descending. See those two licks? They're very similar. It's the type of thing that you could keep going. It's just a very little, a simple little scale pattern. So we got G, F, E, G. F, E, D, F. Try that with me, everybody. G, F, E, G, F, E, D, F. Ready? Go. Everybody's getting that good. Do it again. Ready? Go. Yeah, and then we go like this. One, two, E, three E's in there. Okay, and then there's another D. <laughs> and then we'll do the second phrase. But let's see if we can get through this. So we're going to start the B part. One, two, three. Oh, sorry. E, D, E, F, E, D. Okay, let's try that again. My fault. I screwed it up. Ready? And. Oh, let's do the triplet. Ready? Looking good. One more time. Ready? And. Okay. And then the second phrase. See 
See how that works? That's a G, F, G, D, E, down we go. Little arpeggio there. And then we got A, B, A. Remember that? <laughs> and then we got that whole A part with the ending. Let's try that second phrase again. Uh, G, F, G. Ready? And. Do it again. G, F, G. Ready? And. That looks better. That looks better. One more time. Same thing. G, F, G. Ready? And. Okay, and that's the B part. How did everybody do getting through there? Not too bad? <laughs> okay, let's start off the whole thing nice and slow. A little triplet up, and then that little pattern. We'll get right through to the end of the B part. Okay, triplet up from the V. One, two, three. Everybody's looking pretty happy with themselves. How are we all feeling, people? Doing okay? Problems or anything? I'm here to help. Okay, well, that's awesome. So we'll try the whole thing. We'll just, we'll just take a short little breather of the left hand. And I don't know, some people are up near Perry Sound. Like, I think, Heather, aren't you up near Perry Sound? Where, where you are there? Your cottage, yeah, and uh, my wife yeah, is in Perry Sound. Yeah, you're in Perry Sound. Yeah, my wife is in Perry Sound right now. She's playing at the yep. Festival of the Sound. She, she played at seven. Actually, she's finished now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the Hannaford is Street. It, is it live or online? It was. It was live outside. Oh, okay. I'll look into that because it was all shut down last year. 
Oh, I know, but the, even this year, it's it's only reduced to a few outdoor events, like the boat cruise happened, because that's pretty well outdoors. And these two outdoor concerts for the Hannaford Street Silver Band happened, and a few other small things outdoors, but that's it. Greatly reduced this year, but still they managed to run a few things. Yeah, pretty cool, though. She's very excited. The first gig in a long time. You know, yeah, sorry, cool. I missed it. If I'd known, I would have been there in a heartbeat. Well, yeah, but then you wouldn't be here for class, would you? So I decided to. <laughs> That's <you>. true. Decided. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Home tonight. Yeah, she'll drive home tonight. Yeah, we're used to it. We're road warriors. We we put fifty thousand kilometers in our car every year in in regular times. You know, because wow. uh, by the time like my wife uh, uh, is the librarian. The, the assistant librarian for the Hamilton Philharmonic. And she plays in the Hamilton Phil all the time. She plays in Kitchener, a uh, full-time job. She plays in uh, Stratford, uh, you name it. She's on the road, same as me. We're always on the road. We're always going like two hours or three hours away to play. And so yeah, so for her, it's kind of interesting because this is the bad, the first time back to doing something like that, driving all the way, all the way up there and getting home at, I think she said she'll get home about 1130, which used to be kind of like three times a week, you know, uh, <laughs> but now it's different. So I was kind of like, oh, my God, I hope you're going to be up for that drive. But I'm sure she wow. will. <laughs> well, I hope I hope the 400s clear by the time she gets on it, because it was awful. We left the cottage at four, three and a half hours. Oh, and it was God. only like near Aurelia. That's yeah. why I was late. Pardon me. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. Traffic is back. I went up to the, uh, to the, uh, what do you call it? The LCBO. It's up at the end of our Dufferin Street. It's like maybe two kilometers up the street. And it was last week and it took me 28 minutes to go two kilometers up Dufferin Street, for God's sakes, you know? It's back and it's back with a vengeance. Okay, I have distracted you enough. Let us attempt to play off to California in its entirety. Okay, we're gonna go all the way to California. A one, two, three.
everybody looks like they were doing pretty good throughout that. Anybody having any problems or difficulties with that tune? Or is it just to keep practicing it? Yeah. There's a famous piper, and his name is, uh, well, he, he's gone now. His name was Seamus Ennis, and he was an Illin piper from Dublin, the Irish pipes, you know. And he was a master. He was a, the greatest master of all time, is what people say. And But the guy, of course, was a desperate alcoholic as well. And he had these this very funny way of talking. And, uh, and there's this famous recording where there's an anthropologist and he's asking him how you get the pipes, how you, how you learn how to play the pipes. And you can tell that Seamus has had a few. And he says, first, you must get the grip. Then you must get the trickly ho. Nobody knows what that is. I think he just made up the word trickly ho. And then he goes, and then it's only just to keep on practicing it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you got to do with this too just to keep on practicing it remember that trickly ho anyway let's do her one more time shall we maybe slightly just slightly on the faster side okay uh, one two three There, guys, that's off to California. Great old tune, and uh, you're going to practice getting it a little faster and uh, making sure that it stays in tune and that the bowing is good and all that kind of thing. Uh, and also, you have your drop downs you're working on this time, also the, the first finger ones as well. And excuse me, your double stop open string double stops. Okay, so that's what you got going for this week. And next week, I can't see why I can't 
have class, uh, but I'm just, you know, in case there's weird internet nanigan-ish or some, some crazy thing happens, we don't get out there in time, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. But I'm sure that we'll be good for next week on the Tuesday. I don't think there will be any problems, okay? Uh, but, uh, you know, get in touch if you have questions about it or anything like that. And excellent job tonight, guys. Everybody's looking so much happier with themselves all the time. And that's what I love. Okay, we'll see you next week. Okay. Safe travels, Dan. Thank you very much, Elaine. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Night, night.